update on Earth Alliance meetings on Ganymede with the Intergalactic Confederation. You are listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here is Dr. Michael Sala. On October 15, I received an update on the recent meetings on Ganymede between representatives of the Earth Alliance with several extraterrestrial organizations and a new group entering our solar system, the Intergalactic Confederation. The update from Valnek, relayed through Megan Rose, makes for a total of four independent sources reporting on Ganymede being the site of meetings with a highly evolved new group of extraterrestrial visitors to our solar system. In my October 13 article, Earth Alliance mission to Ganymede to greet ET visitors and inaugurate a Star Trek future, I presented the intel from three independent sources. These were JP, who currently serves with the US Army and participates in off-world covert missions controlled by US Space Command. Thorhan, whose intel was relayed through Elena Danan, and Alex Collier, whose source is Mornay from the Andromeda Council. Valnex update provides more intel with which we can better evaluate the scope and significance of the secret Ganymede meetings. His update begins, quote, The Earth Alliance has completed its first mission to Ganymede, one of Jupiter's moons. This station was used as the meeting place for the Earth Alliance, the Andromedan Council, the Council of Five, and a group of what humans of Terra would consider extremely advanced extraterrestrials. These beings can manifest themselves as extraterrestrial-looking species, but in actuality, they are more of a consciousness, a super-consciousness, that have looked over this galaxy and many others for eons. As coordinator for this mission, I can report on my role and what I am at liberty to disclose. These beings travel to this solar system to witness a birth of a new era, an era that includes the liberation of Earth. As the enemy conveniently reports that there are multiple timelines at play in an effort to confuse the Terrans who are so desperately looking for liberation from hostile control, the truth is that this solar system continues on one timeline together, simultaneously. It is a timeline that benefits the entire galaxy and marks a successful end of war between the Terrans, the Federation and the Orion Group. End quote. What Valnek is effectively saying here is that there is not going to be a split or separation of humanity into different groups that proceed to multiple worlds, densities, timelines, etc. in a planet-wide harvest. In the Ra material, it was said that humanity would polarize into different ascension paths. Those that made the cut for a positive polarity ascension, greater than 50% service to other level of consciousness, would ascend into a fourth density positive Earth. Those that attain a negative polarity, greater than 95% service to self-consciousness, would ascend to a different negative polarity fourth density world. Finally, those who did not graduate, less than 50% service to other and less than 95% service to self would be taken to another third density earth to repeat another 26,000 year cycle. Ever since the Ra material emerged in 1981 to 1984, there have been a steady stream of psychics, researchers and contactees or abductees that have spoken of coming cataclysmic events marking a coming separation of humanity in a planetary harvest. What instead appears to have recently happened is that a temporal war over a future galactic tyranny has been won by the Galactic Federation, its partner ET organizations, and the Earth Alliance. Apparently, this means that a planetary harvest does not occur, and most of humanity collectively moves forward in a positive timeline, a Star Trek future. Valnek continues. I can report that I was in charge of the Federation troops and organizing the troops of the Alliance. I must emphasize that while this mission was not one of war, it was equally important in the eyes of our ancestors, the superconsciousness, which some call an intergalactic federation. 
This name is for us to use. However, these beings operate at such a high level that they do not use words, language or anything of the sort to express themselves. It is by all means a translation of a frequency for our own understanding. This mission was especially important for the Earth Alliance. The leaders of the Earth Alliance and their respective space programs, which I can report will all be federated under a new name, which I will not disclose. The name was chosen after the meeting with the Intergalactic Federation. End quote. In earlier updates, I reported that agreements were reached in meetings held upon an Ashtar Command base above the atmosphere of Jupiter between leaders of 14 spacefaring nations and an alliance of positive extraterrestrial groups, the Galactic Federation of Worlds, the Ashtar Command, the Andromeda Council and the Council of Five. The 14 spacefaring nations agreed to work together under the leadership of the US Space Command to form a multinational space alliance similar to Starfleet, as depicted in the iconic TV series Star Trek. Valnek's update means that despite mainstream media depictions of relations between the world's major nations deteriorating to the point of a devastating regional war coming soon, Agreements are being secretly made and implemented in the background. Eventually, these agreements will be revealed and humanity collectively embarks on a new future under a more unified global political structure whose name is still secret. Valnek continues. The Terran leaders were deeply moved by the experience. For the first time, their perception of reality and the meaning, the purpose of leadership and guidance in this galaxy deeply touch their consciousness. The development of the Terran leader's consciousness is something we have been trying to influence in a positive manner for some time, but especially recently, since plans are being made to hand over the responsibility of defending Terra with the production of the Starfleet. These Terran leaders, I can say with confidence, have been influenced by the consciousness of the forefathers, the foreseeders in such a way that the Federation and the Council of Five, along with the Andromedan Council, have no reservation in their ability or ethical standards as it relates to being responsible for the safety and positive progression of the planet. I will reiterate again that this message may be more important to the Terran people than any other message. I am aware that they have been concerned for some time, rightfully so, as to the ethical and moral standard of their leaders, we will continue to move forward. I salute you. End quote. If humanity's political and military leaders that attended the Ganymede meetings have been transformed as a result of their meetings with the Intergalactic Confederation, or Federation, that would indeed be a tremendously important message for us to contemplate. In a second October 15 message, Valnek asserted that the Ganymede meeting discussed the timing of full disclosure of extraterrestrial life. Quote, the disclosure of extraterrestrial life to the Terrans is something that was discussed at these meetings. As I stated previously, the consciousness of the Terran leaders was first evaluated by the Elders or the Cedars. A plan was formulated to disclose to the world, to Terran civilians, the truth of extraterrestrial life and the relationship these beings have to the Terran people. This is a delicate procedure, as most Terrans have been fooled to believe they are the only life in this solar system, this galaxy. As to not scare the Terrans, disclosure will happen slowly over time. There is a specific plan that has been formulated, as I mentioned, in accordance with this timeline which will unfold, but I am not at liberty to give specifics. The guidance that was sought from the Intergalactic Federation included this matter. They agreed that the Galactic Federation and the Earth Alliance's plan indeed encompasses the best interest of the Terran people. End quote. It can be speculated that extraterrestrial disclosure will follow not long after the public release of advanced health technologies, free energy systems and exotically propelled spacecraft being mass-produced for a future Starfleet described in previous articles. These technology releases would increase public confidence in a new global federated political system agreed to at the Ganymede meeting that will replace the compromised deep state controlled international system currently in operation. 
I asked Valnek a series of questions that were relayed by Megan to him, and I received his answers on October 16. What follows is the relevant Q&A with Valnek. Question 1. Did the Earth Alliance establish a base of operations on Ganymede? Was one given to them, or did they just visit and leave? Valnek. The Earth Alliance does not have a base there. We, the Federation and the Alliance, were given one to use for these meetings. The base belongs to Ashtar Galactic Command from the Sirius B system. They are a group that rebelled against Sakaar infiltration and set up a military presence in the orbit of Jupiter. I can report that once Federated, meaning the Earth Alliance joins the membership with the Federation, they will be given access to certain sites and bases as a courtesy to use for such events or meetings. End quote. This means that whatever facilities were provided by the Earth Alliance on Ganymede are temporary and merely provide a means for future meetings and negotiations until such time as the Earth Alliance formally allies itself with the Galactic Federation. Question 2. Did the Earth Alliance leaders come from their civilian space programs or their military space commands? Valnek, I can disclose that some leaders were escorted by the Alliance military and the Federation. These leaders included members from the United States and their organized space command. Soon, there will be one organized faction orbiting Terra, which will be a military force. There were privately owned civilian space programs used for transport, however, not for leaders of Earth Alliance. End quote. Valnek has revealed that the Star Trek future envisaged as the optimal timeline in a 2019 Space Futures workshop report that presented eight possible future scenarios in space by the year 2060 is going to happen much faster than predicted. Question 3. Were aerospace corporations present at the meetings? Valnek. I can report that yes, they were, in the interest of spiritual progression. They were invited. You see, it is the Federation's goal to help develop the consciousness of all these leaders, peoples and corporations by exposing them to different cultures and points of view. Of course, from an extraterrestrial point of view. This is likely to benefit their consciousness, but also an understanding of other species, whom they will interact with when members of the Federation. End quote. This is significant since it means that the same corporations that attended the July Jupiter meetings were also present at the Ganymede meetings. In a previous update, it was confirmed by Valnek that SpaceX, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic were among the aerospace companies that attended the Jupiter meetings. Two of the CEOs of those corporations, Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson, were on their respective companies' first manned space flights to the lower edge of space which were effectively covers for them to attend the Jupiter meetings. This confirms that manned space flights are being used as covers for corporate CEOs and their representatives attending diplomatic meetings with different extraterrestrial organizations. This is pertinent to the next question. Question 4. Was William Shatner's recent Blue Origin flight a cover for him to attend the meetings? Valnek, I cannot confirm, but you are welcome to speculate. End quote. My speculation is that Shatner, along with the three other astronauts that flew with him in Blue Origin's second manned flight, did use this as a cover to attend the Ganymede meetings. For the record, the three other astronauts were Audrey Powers, Blue Origin's Vice President of Mission and Flight Operations, Glenn DeVriest, Medidata Solutions co-founder, and Chris Boshishuezen, Planet Lab's co-founder. What was especially telling was the strong emotional reaction Shatner had after the flight. Shatner told reporters, quote, I'm so filled with emotion about what just happened. It's extraordinary, extraordinary. It's so much larger than me and life. It hasn't got anything to do with the little green men and the blue orb. It has to do with the enormity and the quickness and the suddenness of life and death. To see the blue color whip by you and now you're staring into blackness Everybody in the world needs to do this. Everybody in the world needs to see this. I was overwhelmed by all the things we need to do and the loves and the losses. It was an enormous moment for me that I never expected. Clearly, Shatner was overwhelmed by the experience. 
But was it solely due to a spaceflight for a few minutes above the von Karman line, an altitude of 100 kilometers, or was his emotional reaction due to something far more significant having taken place? Have Shatner's memories of an extraterrestrial encounter been temporarily repressed so all he had left was the emotional impact of the encounter? This takes me to the next Q&A. Question 5. Can you elaborate on how the Alliance leaders were moved by the meetings? For example, heart chakra opening, clearing negative energy attachments, connecting to source energy, etc. Valnek. Ah, this is a very interesting answer. You see, these beings, the consciousness, if you will, that we call the Intergalactic Federation, they are responsible for seeding many different races that date far beyond the history of man. They are the ancestors of planet Terra and many others and hold the consciousness of creation. It may be helpful to think of them as energy instead of extraterrestrials or people. Their energy holds a quantum frequency that contains the original intention of this planet and its people, when it was first created and even before it and the inhabitants were created. Please understand that we are aware that there has been many genetic experiments on planet Terra with the human race, but this is not what I am talking about. I am talking about the development of the soul, of the consciousness. By just being in their presence, the quantum frequency activates a knowing within them, a knowing that they are not a body, but a soul. They are connected to the heart of the people, of all people, and so working together in the best interest of all is what will be not only beneficial, but the intention behind creation. End quote. This is vitally important clarification by Valnek. Just being in the presence of members of this intergalactic confederation triggers a knowing, a soul awakening, through the quantum frequency they emanate. I can only speculate about the effect of being in the presence of highly evolved beings that awaken one to the original intention of this planet and its people. It would indeed be overwhelming and life-changing, similar to what Shatner reported. Valnek's update is indeed stunning in its scope and implications. He has provided significant new details about what transpired on Ganymede. It's vitally important to emphasize that Valnek's information is the fourth independent source reporting on the Ganymede meetings. Something profound and life-changing is currently happening on Ganymede, and we may not need to wait too long before the truth is finally revealed for all humanity. This has been Dr. Michael Sala with ExoPolitics Today. I wish to thank Megan Rose for sending me Valnex update and for relaying my questions to him and his responses. To learn more about Megan, you can visit her YouTube channel. Link is in the description. If you want to learn more about different galactic federations and councils, I highly recommend visiting a webpage I created on exopolitics.org where I'll list all of the updates and all of the information concerning the Galactic Federation of Worlds as reported through Valnek and Thorhan through their intermediaries, Megan Rose and Elena Denard. Finally, if you want to learn more about our Star Trek future, I recommend my 2021 book, Space Force, Our Star Trek Future, and my recent webinar, Galactic Federations, Councils and Secret Space Programs, which is now available on Vimeo. And don't forget to like, share or subscribe to ExoPolitics Today.